Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome to The Pit Stop. I'm your host, Raja, and today I'm joined with my very special intergalactic friend, Mariah Balenciaga! Hey, what's going on, everybody? We come in peace. Oh, we come in Reese's Pieces. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. Making me hungry. Baby, I want a snack. <laughs> Let's just dig right into this episode. Uh, this one, I think, has been my personal, personal favorite, mm -hmm. only because it is so packed with runway. Yes, you are a runway girl. I love looks, I love runway. So last week, Asia O'Hara won with her Tweety Bird look, which I absolutely adored. I thought it was gorgeous. It was pretty, um, yes. yes. And um, we had to send Yuha home. Oh, she's the sweetest. I know, I'm gonna miss her, but you know what? See you later, bitch. Well, somebody has to go home. <laughs> somebody gotta go, somebody has got to go. At the top of the episode, Monique calls out Mayhem for throwing her under the bus. Monique is a very uh, domineering character and mm -hmm. probably had her mindset on what she wanted. So even if Mayhem would have spoken up, it would have still gone the same way. So why waste your breath? She's the team captain, mm -hmm. and ultimately she's responsible for her team. Now, how important is it for you to speak your mind in those situations? Would you have kept quiet? I'm not going to strain my vocal cords trying to talk over you. But you get your ideas out, and then at the end, I'll let you know how stupid they sound. <laughs> So do you think that the queens are putting a little target on her back because she opened up her mouth and called everyone else big mouths and she was there to win the money? So do you think that she's in trouble now? Once you say the truth, the hardcore truth, people are like, oh, okay, you're not even trying to play with us then. So let's talk about uh, the mini challenge. The mini mm -hmm. challenge was for the girls to photobomb photographs with celebrities. The girls, I think, did a really good job with it. Cause, and they picked some really good shots of the celebs. And also, it was just a time for them to get silly. And not be so focused on being pretty and mm -hmm. having their hair together. Now, if you were given the opportunity to photobomb any celebrity, what, what, who would it be? Either Oprah or Barack Obama. Uh. Barack Obama would definitely have fun with it. Now, is there a key to winning a challenge like this, like a mini challenge? It's all about having fun, doing something quick, mm -hmm. and then having uh, the concept in mind and be able to execute it really quickly. Mm -hmm. It's like being witty and going with it. Don't overthink it. Right. Just don't overthink it. Well, Aquaria wins the mini challenge. That's fierce for her. Yes. Okay, so let's dig right into this maxi challenge. This maxi challenge was probably the most maxi of all the maxis. It was more maxi than a feminine napkin. Yeah. Yes, it was intense. You don't see something this maxi until the very top three. How difficult do you think it is to execute something like this? To not only just do one look, but to do three separate looks. They only had to make one look from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other two, they just pretty much had to um, style it, mm -hmm. which also can be a challenge in itself. What is the key to, to doing well in a challenge like this, you think? Time management. Mm -hmm. It really is. Know your strengths in the areas that you are strong. Yep. Put those to the side where you know all you have to do is kind of piece, tweak it here and there. And then go to your, your weakest point and put most of your time there. Asia definitely had some problems in time management. Do you think it was wise for her to make a decision like that? Asia is a pageant girl, mm -hmm. but when you get to pageants, your package is already ready. Mm -hmm. Like everything is made, everything is styled, everything is put together. So you have time to be like, oh, sis, do you need help with this? Do yep. you need help with that? But when you have to put something together mm -hmm. and you're not put together, that's your fault. Let's start talking about this runway. First of all, what was going on with Rue's look? Oh, I actually loved it. It was I so loved it. brilliant. She said, you're not going to get me either with those UV rays. And she <laughs> said, no ma'am, this skin is too expensive. Yeah, I have definitely done those moments where uh, you just completely just cover yourself. It was very reminiscent of like Lee Bowery and it had a very club kid feel. Three separate categories. Uh, the first one being Alaska winter realness. Two favorites. Let's go with two. Aquaria. Mm -hmm. I think it was well executed. And the idea of using that whole like uh, Mexican wrestler, luchador kind of theme, weird. Nobody that else really worked, yeah. You would have thought about it if it was a wrestling challenge, but mm -hmm. not for a swimwear challenge. Yeah. I think that was so f fresh and fun. Hey, Mexican wrestlers like to go swimming too. Also, Eureka. I loved it. I think it was very well executed. I mm -hmm. love that she understood her proportions, her shape, her lines, and she still had fun with the print of the cover up. Mm -hmm. And then for my bottom would have to be Dusty Ray. Bless. Dusty Ray bottoms. Mm -hmm. Uh, the best thing about that was the hat. 
The hat was magnificent. Yes, and she could have done like a patent leather kind of harness swimsuit that would have been very effective. My second bottom would have to be the Vixen. I just did not get, and then she was like, I've waited so long to clack this fan on the runway, and she didn't clack she it. She didn't even clack it. No. I wanted to see a Yeah, it was just an awkward kind of sedated clear peacock. Definitely disappointed with was Asia O'Hara's. It needed more pom-poms. Yes. It needed rhinestones. It needed stones. Mm -hmm. oh. Category is Miami Summer Realness. Who were your two favorites? Aquaria and Mayhem. Mm. I love the whimsy of the colorful faux fur. She sold it well. Mm -hmm. She looks beautiful in it. And then I also love the ferocity of Mayhem's. It's traditional, intense, ice queen, mm -hmm. lived for it. Yeah, I really loved Cameron's look. I appreciated it because I know Cameron and I know that this was a, a time for her to really shine. I think people dismiss her as being just this thirst trap, sexy tattooed muscle dude. She really got to show a lot of her fantasy. So who are your least favorites in this grouping? Blair St. Clair. It was just a little too pedestrian, a little too everyday. I'm and getting a lot of that from her. Yeah, it's like, sometimes it's like, you gotta amp it up. And I thought she was gonna take it off and reveal something like magical. Mm -hmm. No. My second would have to be the Vixen. Oh. The Vixen. Um, she was being transparent, but I saw right through it. Mm, exactly. That, that <laughs> petticoat that she had on needed something over it. This part was really exciting for me, the last runway look, which is the Martian Extravaganza Eleganza, or however way you say it. Who were your top two favorites in that one? My top two favorites were Eureka mm -hmm. O'Hara, Again, her construction and the fact that she made that mm -hmm. in the time allotted, brilliant. And Mayhem, she looked like she was out scouting for the party. She looked like a promoter. She looked like a Martian party promoter. She looked like the girl who was about to take you not only to Mars, she was gonna take you to a party in Jupiter, and definitely Uranus. Oh, the after party. I really loved Aquarius because Aquaria basically made, she wore nothing basically. Well, that was a little too close for me to um, Valentina. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine. I loved it. I thought it was. Yeah. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. It was definitely a showstopper. It was. Who do you think uh, didn't do so well? Dusty Ray Bottoms. Mm -hmm. She missed the mark. She mm -hmm. looks more like a kind of like a, a fairy, a, a wood nymph. Mm -hmm. For my second least favorite, it was a toss up between Monique Hart and Monet Exchange. Mm -hmm. I give Monet Exchange a little more credit because it was a difficult material mm -hmm. and there was a little more construction to it. Monique Hart, it was just like very, very minimal and very, very basic. And considering that's the only outfit that you had to make. Mm -hmm. So let's count up all the scores in our head. Mm -hmm. Who was your top favorite out of all of, out of all of these looks? Who was your top, top favorite? Well, I have to say Aquaria. It was clean, consistent all the way through. She really is killing it, and yeah. I love her point of view and her vision and her costuming, and just, she just, she just kind of knows what she's talking about. Yeah. And Miss Cracker too. Miss Cracker knows what she's doing too. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what what unfolds between those two. <laughs> Me too. I hope they just. Make out. I mean, why not? Yeah. Make a uh, Cameron Michael sandwich. What? Now all the love from the judges seemed to go to Aquaria and Cracker. Why do we keep talking about that? Well, it could have gone either way, but they are very similar profiles. Their height, their size, they're both little petite things, little mm -hmm. fresh, little bright-eyed dragons. Dusty Ray Bottoms and Monet Exchange end up at the bottom, which is really shocking for me to see Monet Exchange at the bottom. It's season 10. Yeah. And it's like now with us traveling and working with so many girls in their cities, and we get to know them and work with them regularly, and so it's always gonna be hard. Mm -hmm. But I think it was it was the judge's decision. I think it was the right one. So the bottom two had to, obviously, they had to do their uh, lip sync for your life. Mm -hmm. And um, now when I saw Monet up there standing next to Dusty Ray, I was like, this could go so many different ways, but I just knew that Monet was gonna kill it. Yeah. I just felt it. I was like, that bitch is going to serve. Just the amount of lyrics packed into that short amount of time. I could never. Now I know you're a very acrobatic queen. Do you think uh, that do you think that every lip sync we need to see a split? Sometimes the song just warrants it. Mm -hmm. Like you have to understand the song that you're performing to mm -hmm. and make the judges feel it. Because if you're just going through motions and it doesn't make sense with the song, yeah. 
well, then they're not gonna connect to you. What do we think of Dusty's performance? You could tell she was definitely out of her element. Mm -hmm. She was out of her element, um, the genre of music, uh, and sometimes that's just the draw of the cards. Mm -hmm. I thought she did a pretty good job, though, considering. Yeah. Now, would you agree with the elimination? Dusty had to go home. What do we think about that? You know, sometimes I'm sitting at home or at like the viewing parties, and I'm, I'm like, oh, judges, why? But with this, with this elimination, I'm in complete agreement. And Monet just proved why she need, why she deserved to be here for another episode. With your expert opinion, who do you think is at the very top, and is, you just know from the bottom of your heart that this is the winner? Can I pick three? Do I have to pick one? Uh, let's pick two. Eureka O'Hara and Aquaria, mm -hmm. and then a very close third, My Mayhem. Okay, I, I, will, I agree with you and I will excuse that third because I was gonna say the same three. Mariah, I wanna thank you for stopping by. It is always a pleasure to sit here and kiki with you. Uh, I think it's time for us to go get a cocktail. I concur. And I wanna say a special thank you to all of you watching and we'll see you on the pit stop next week. Goodbye, everyone. Hey beauties, it's Sasha Velour, the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. Do you want all the hot Drag Race tea? Then you better subscribe to VH1's YouTube channel, and you'll have all the fresh videos sent directly to your inbox. Now that's something not to joke about.